Hey everybody, thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. We're going to be talking about the always reliable Beretta 92FS. And realistically, I've had this in my collection for about three years and just took it out to a couple of range trips the first time this year uh, because I started looking at a lot of my pistols in my collection and trying to categorize them as to what I want them to do. I have some that are good for home defense, concealed carry, and could fit into a duty role. Um, and then I have some pistols that are solely concealed carry pistols. And my question was, where does the Beretta 92FS fit? Is there a pistol that I already have that would be better than what this pistol can do for me? And if so, then maybe I should look at getting rid of it. And that's kind of where I'm at. Before we get into the video though, I wanna hear what you guys have to say. Sound off in the comment section down below. What do you think of the Breda 92FS? Obviously it has been around for a very long time. It's a great pistol, but would you carry it as a concealed carry pistol? If not, would you relegate it to home defense or a duty or whatever? Let me know, sound off in the comment section down below because that's what we're talking about. Could I conceal carry this pistol? The short answer is yeah, you could, but would I? And the answer to that is no. And I have three major reasons why I would not carry this pistol. Now this video is not going to be me bashing the Beretta 92. Uh, it's a great pistol. If you carry it, by all means, continue to carry it. If you think that it fits your role, by all means do so. I'm just hoping to provide you guys some insight as to some of my train of thought, why I go the way I go, um, as far as my duty weapons, my sealed carry weapons, and so on and so forth, and then allow you guys to make your own decision. If some of the things that I have to say doesn't apply to you, great, that's fine. Just continue to do what you're doing. If it works for you, keep on doing it. Continue to train, all that good stuff. Okay, so what's the number one reason as to why I would not carry this pistol on a daily basis for concealed carry? Well, it's the weight. It is an extremely heavy pistol seeing that it is a all steel pistol. And that weight, especially with, you know, uh, with a personal defense ammunition in a 15 round magazine, that weight will really wear you down throughout the day. Now, if you're just jumping in to the, go to the store or whatever, that's fine, I understand that. Could you get used to that weight? Yeah, you could, but for someone who is new to concealed carry, which we've seen an influx of new firearms owners, a lot of people wanting to conceal carry their pistols. We've now have Texas added to the fold for constitutional carry states, that makes it 20. A lot more people are wanting to conceal carry. They know about the Beretta 92 because of all the action movies. They want to go out and get one and conceal carry it. And then they get going and they're like, man, this thing is heavy, man. I just, it's uncomfortable. I don't want to carry it anymore. And then they stop carrying it. And then unfortunately they may become victim to a crime. With that being said, that is the number one reason. Uh, in addition to that reason for number one uh, is it's pretty, thick as well. It's going to be a little bit harder to conceal carry this in comparison to a lot of the other pistols that are out on the market today, especially the more modern pistols. Uh, for me, with my Doug Flutie hands, I have fairly small hands. <laughs> uh, this just seems to be too big. Uh, putting my hands into a good grip uh, just seems like there's just way too much going on there and I just don't feel confident that I'm getting as good of a grip as I could on other pistols, especially more modern pistols that I'm used to right now. Uh, is this all training related? Yeah, sure. You could train around carrying this uh, heavier pistol on a daily basis. You could uh, get used to the larger grip. I totally understand that. But if I have the option to go to something that ends up being a little bit more comfortable, fits my hand a little bit better, then I'm more than apt to do that. So that's number one. Number two is going to be the controls. Because of the larger grip and my small hands, I have a hard time actuating some of these controls. Now, a lot of people would say, well, that's, that's a good thing because uh, you want to have your controls set so you're not accidentally hitting them. 
or unintentionally hitting these magazine releases or slide levers or whatever the case may be. And I don't necessarily disagree with that, but again, I've gotten used to other more modern pistols where my fingers, my thumb, hits these controls a lot better instead of having to break my, break my grip. This is my normal grip right here, can't reach it, have to break it to come around and get these levers here. That's uh, a small aspect of the second reason. The larger aspect of it is going to be this safety decocker. If you don't know, the Beretta 92FS has a safety decocker. What it does is when you press it down, the hammer falls, the firing pin is uh, covered, and the trigger is rendered inoperable. So uh, great design on putting all that together, but the slide lever here is not all that great. The idea behind it is wonderful, but having the safety lever decocker on the slide makes it very difficult. So as you are drawing your pistol, as you're drawing your pistol here, you're having to flip up to render on fire and place rounds on target. Could you train around that? Sure. Have I taken it to the range and been able to successfully defeat my safety and place rounds down range? Absolutely. But I am far slower than I am with more modern pistols. So that's a big issue for me there. In addition to that, let's say that you're at slide lock and you're wanting to do a magazine reload. So you do that and you come over top to um, rack the slide, whether it be through a slingshot or over the top here. You can see it's on fire, ready to go. And then I place it on safe because as I'm coming over to top, I'm sliding my hand over the safety selector decocker and I'm placing it on safe when I'm wanting to fire it. That could be an issue as well in a personal defense type of situation. So those aspects right there is my number two reason as to why I would be very skeptical or very cautious about recommending this pistol for concealed carry and why I am not going to use it. All right, so let's talk about reason number three. Reason number three is going to be the versatility of this pistol. While it is exceptionally reliable and very accurate pistol, one of the things that I'm not very happy with is the fact that I have no way to add a light or a red dot to this pistol. Is there other 92 series out on the market today that you could do that to? Sure, there's the M9A3, there's the Langdon Tactical, there's Wilson Combats, I get that. But you're going to be spending a lot more money for those pistols than you would for this one. This one's usually coming around that 750 mark and those other pistols are going to be pushing well over $850. So that is a major no-go for me. My concealed carry pistols have to have a red dot have to have a light. Whether I use those two features may or may not happen, but I need to have those on my concealed carry pistols. As I get older, my eyes are starting to fade a little bit. Red dots are actually becoming more and more useful for me because of my eyesight. It's just ever so slightly starting to fade a little bit. It, red dots have been a major help for me. So having a pistol that does not have that aspect of it, is just going to be pushed to home defense or duty pistols. And in this case, I already have those roles filled by other pistols. So that is the major reasons why I would not use the Beretta 92FS as a killed seal carry pistol. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't buy one. If you feel that you want to buy one because you had one while you're in the military or you really liked Die Hard or Lethal Weapon or whatever the case may be, by all means, go out and buy one, train with it, um, make sure that you're proficient with it if you're going to use it for home defense or concealed carry or whatever you choose to do it. Just know that there are some concerns with it, some, not concerns, but there are some preference issues when it comes to whether or not this would be the best concealed carry pistol out there. But at the end of the day, it is a gorgeous gun. It's, it's really good looking, it's reliable, it's accurate. Um, unfortunately, I've just got other pistols that will do the job a little bit better and I'm going to stick with those. But with that being said, that 
sums it up for this time. What do you guys think? Am I completely off base here or am I making some sense? Again, by no means am I trashing the Breda 92FS, even though the pistols that I carry in the Army were trash and I hated the 92 and the M9 for a long time. Since I've become a civilian, I've really come to appreciate this pistol for what it is. And unfortunately, in my opinion, I don't believe it is the best option for concealed carry. But that's just me. Let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comment section down below. With that being said, that's gonna pretty much cover it for this video. I really do appreciate you guys swinging by. Thank you to all my Patreon members, everybody who is liking, commenting, subscribing, turning on those bell notifications. Thank you so much. And if you haven't already done some of that stuff, I'd encourage you guys to do that if you think that I deserve it. As always, I appreciate you guys. We're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so very much. Freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Take it easy, guys. Bye, y'all.